Before the video starts, I want to give a quick shout out to Packet Pub. They have come up with an amazing book titled Bioinformatics with Python Cookbook. The content is spread out in 12 chapters and it guides you right from the very basic Python codes right to the advanced applications on bioinformatics. So if you want to get the book, you can hit the first link in the description and that is going to take you to their website and you can get it from there or you can hit the second link in the description which will take you to the Amazon page where, from where you can buy the book. So get the book and spice up your bioinformatics as well as your Python codes to the next level. Now back to the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and uh, we're back with another biopython video. So in this video we are going to do something very interesting. We are going to write some codes and build a phylogenetic tree. I mean we're going to visualize a phylogenetic tree from, uh, from a tree file. So what you need to do first, if you are not having BioPython installed in your system, you need to install that first. So I have already made a video where I have uh, shown how to install, where I have already shown how to install BioPython. You can check that out. It would be there in the description. The link would be there and there would be one card popping out right now where uh, you can click on that and you can check out the video. And another thing that you need to have is a tree file. So basically this is the file and the extension of this file is .dnd that stands for dendrogram. And this is a new wick format tree file. So this brackets and the letters, the letters denotes the nodes and the brackets denote like the groupings of each nodes. So A and B are together, C and D are together, then A, B, C, D, they are together. Uh, that is different from E, F, G. So I'm going to visualize this, uh, this, um, this file in the form of a dendrogram or in the form of a phylogenetic tree. So you need to have the tree and you need to have this tree file uh, in the same hierarchy or in the same directory where you are having your Python file in which, in which you're working. So I'm working in this phylogeny.py. This is my Python file. This is the Python file in which I'm working. And this tree file is in the same directory. It's in the same folder. So once you're done with that, you're good to go. And let's start. So the f like, like everything in BioPython, we are gonna say from bio, import and since we are uh, talking about phylogenetic tree we're going to say phylo right so we are calling the module phylo from biopython next we are going to parse the file parse the tree file that we have so for that we, we're going to write phylo.read and inside this, we're going to put in two arguments. The first one will be the name of the tree file. So tree.dnd. And we are going to look at, uh, we're going to uh, give in the format. Like I said, it's a new wick format tree file. So these two are needed. So if you have a different format tree file, you're going to give that. Now, that's done. Let's put this whole thing inside a variable. So I'm going to say tree and the whole thing is inside a variable. So every time I not need to write this whole line, I can just put in tree and that would mean that I'm calling this whole thing. So once this is done, I'm going to say print and to print the print the tree tree inside the console, what I need to do, I need to make an ASCII art out of it. So BioPython has a very good way of doing that. So I'm going to say philo dot draw underscore ASCII. I need to, and ASCII has got two eyes. So remember that. And inside ASCII, I'm going to say, I want the ASCII of this tree. So you're going to have this, uh, you're going to have uh, the dashed lines and all this stuff as your ASCII art. So we're going to see that and once that is done, I'm going to hit run and if everything goes well, we're going to see our ASCII art over here with the nodes and the branches. So let me extend this a little bit. 
Okay, so here is your phylogenetic tree in the form of an ASCII art. Now, it can be up to this, but you can take it up a notch and you can build it further. If you want to have a separate file, if you want to have a separate image file of this ASCII art, of this phylogenetic tree, you can do that as well. For that, you need to install another package, which is called matplotlib. All you need to do is write in the console pip install matplotlib. So this is the library that is going to help us um, visualize the tree in an image format in a separate file. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna run this. I'm not gonna run this. This is already installed in my system. So first you need to install this and make sure that your internet is connected while you're installing this. So once you're done with that, once you once you're done installing matplotlib, um, you need to call in a module which is pylab. So I'm gonna say import pylab. This is a module from the matplotlib and since it is installed, I don't need to write from uh, this, from matplotlib. So this is, a Py this is a Python package itself. Now, once I've called it, um, I need to set some parameters. I need to make a rooted tree. So I'm gonna say tree.rooted and this would be true. Next, I'm gonna say, Philo, philo dot draw, and this I'm not gonna not gonna say any ASCII art or something. Just draw, and I'm gonna put in the um, put in the parsed file of the phylogenetic tree. So that's there. And once I do this, I do not need to print this out because I do not need it here. I want it a separate file. So once I hit run, if everything goes right, uh, different, uh, a window is going to pop out and you're going to see the same exact ASCII art in the form of an image. So let's hit run. You're going to have the ASCII art and here is your uh, dendrogram or the um, phylogenetic tree in the form of a dendrogram. So you have the EFG in one set and you have AB in one set, CD in one set. These have a common ancestor and these again goes back and form a common ancestor with EFG. So you can leave it up to here, but let's say I want to color this part. I want to color EFG, the, the branches of EFG. I can do that also. So for that, um, what I want you to do is after you have imported PyLab, before you are showing the tree, I mean, before you are drawing the tree over here, somewhere over here, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna write tree dot common underscore ancestor. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanna make the color of the common ancestor of E, F, and G to be the same because they are in one group. So common ancestor. And inside this, uh, you need to be careful while writing this. So curly braces, and first you need to write name, colon, again, the inverted commas. And first I'm gonna give E. So that would this would be under one curly brace. And again, uh, open another curly brace. I'm gonna say name, colon and F. So if I give these two, it's going to, I mean, it's going to take all the three because those three are in the same group. So E and F are done. And remember to close the brackets and close the invited com uh, inverted commas. <coughs> after, after this is done, uh, all you need to do is, um, okay, let's put this inside a variable. So I'm gonna say most recent common ancestor. MRCA. So after this, all you need to do is say, you don't need to write this whole thing tree.common ancestor. All you need to do is call this MRCA dot color and inside, uh, and you need to put this value as any color you want, let's say red. 
so this is done and then then the rooted tree is formed and then you draw the tree so what happens in python is it goes from the top it comes from the top and it interprets every line one by one so you need to be very careful when you're writing any code because if i would have written this after this after the draw command then it wouldn't have uh, made the color red because it is already drawing then it is reading the red color so nothing would have happened that is why we have to put it before we are drawing the phylogenetic tree clear the console a little bit and i'm going to hit run so if everything goes right you're going to see the ascii art first and then the window is going to pop out and you have the color of these three branches of efg as red so that's about it for this video hope you like the video and if you like the video do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet and i'm going to see you in the next one bye bye